Hi everyone. I hope I am audible and visible. Could you just give me a quick yes if you can see and hear me clearly? Awesome. So what we're going to discuss in today's session is how to create addresses, custodial as well as non-custodial, and then how to do permissions management for them. So in the previous session, we discussed how to set up and we set up our own multi-chain based blockchain. Now in the blockchain world or in the crypto world, you must have heard about this concept a lot of times, which is not your keys, not your coins, where we say that if you do not have control over the private key, then you do not have control over your own assets or cryptos. And that is why we say that it is better to use a decentralized wallet, like something like a MetaMask where your keys are with you, rather than putting your cryptos on an exchange where your keys are not with you. So what does this really mean when we talk about custodial versus non-custodial? So in a custodial wallet, the custody of your keys is with someone else. In a non-custodial wallet, the custody of your keys is with you, not with any third party. So let's have a look at all the various commands that we are going to use to create these kinds of addresses. And then we'll see how to actually manage the permissions. So let me just share my screen. So you, you must be familiar with this screen. We saw it last time also where this is how we are logging into our node of the blockchain that we've set up. And we are logging in in the command line interface in the interactive mode. So it makes it becomes easy for us to run different kinds of commands. So the first one that we're going to try is called get new address. Now, when I run that, the output is an address. So it returns a new custodial address because the private key relating to this address is kept in the node. So I as the end user will not be able to access my private key. A situation for this would be, let's say again, a bank, which is running a node for its customers and it is giving addresses to its customers. So they simply need to log in using their username, password into the bank's mobile app. And then when they run any kind of a command, they don't run it with the private key. They run it using the username, password. The bank then runs the actual transaction because the, only the bank controls the private key corresponding to this address as always if you have questions just keep putting them in the comments and i'll take them from time to time so this is one of the simplest commands that we would start with so we ran get new address and it returned a new custodial address whose private key is added to the wallet running in the node now suppose let's try out another command which is get addresses space true now here I'm not saying get new address. I'm just saying get addresses. So when I run this command, what it shows me are all the addresses created on this node with some additional information about each. So for example, here we can see the address is mine. That means do we have, does this node have the private key? Is it a watch only address? Is there a script with it? And what is the public key? So because we said get addresses true, it gave us more information so it gave us a list of the addresses in this nodes wallet with more information about each address now if we don't want so much information we could run get addresses false and here as you can see it is only showing us the addresses with no additional information about them i hope this part was clear it's fairly simple now let's try out another command which is list addresses so i'm going to run that command here so here again it shows us all the addresses and with each of them it only tells us whether we have the private key or not so when we say is mine it means that the private key of this address is on this node so it just gave us this information so these are the various commands you could use kind of doing more or less the same thing so get addresses with true or false or list addresses kind of gives you very similar information now let's go into a non-custodial address that means the public private key pair is not going to be stored on the node it is not going to be available to anybody else other than us 
and for each key pair the address public key and private key is going to be provided so let's take an example so here you can see it's very different from what happened the first time it not only gives us the address it also gives us the public key and the private key now it is very important let's say we have the application which has been built here is connected to the chain and we have told the user that whenever you create your own new address the private key will be with you so on the node the private key gets generated and at this stage we need to make sure that the private key is stored in the local storage in the browser or the mobile app of the end user so only the end user has the private key whereas the address and the public key could be stored with the bank so i hope you get the main difference here that in create key pair that's why the word is create key pair and we are not saying get new address it's key pairs so it is generating this public private key pair provide the private key to the customer and it is not going to be stored by the bank or anybody running this node so in future also nobody else can make this transaction other than you because only you have your private key stored with you i hope it's all clear if there are questions just keep putting them on the side now suppose we want to create multiple key pairs in the same shot so we could just simply say create key pairs 2 so now it is going to generate 2 for us or we could say create 5 and it would generate 5 key pairs for us so it's very very simple to use depending upon your use case you are going to use either get new address for a custodial address create key pairs for non custodial and you could create multiple of them at the same time now let's try out another interesting command which is called validate address now what this is going to do is it is going to return information about a particular address corresponding to a private key or a public key that we are going to now provide so let's take an example here we talk about this public key so we say validate address and we put this public key and it tells us yes this is true this is the address but the private key is not available with this node that's why is mine is coming as false so this is a simple uh, thing to use for validating addresses then we have another interesting one which is called import address so let me put that here okay so what happens in import address is that it is going to add some addresses to the node wallet without any associated private key so why do we do something like this this is if we want to create watch only addresses that means we want to monitor the activity like what is the balance of this address from time to time so we can use our apis to run commands to find out what all that address is doing but we cannot spend the funds of that address so if that address has some inputs or some assets we cannot spend it because we do not have the private key but we can watch it so we could simply go something like this so we can say import address and then we can give it any address and we can import it and we can start monitoring it or watching it let me check if there are any pending questions no it's all clear to all of you by the way i hope it is all clear and i'm not going too fast can you just give me an a clear so that whatever i've said so far is absolutely clear and you've understood it all just give me a quick yes or a clear whatever you would like to say and then i'll move on to permissions awesome now i'm going to move to the next step where we are going to talk about permission so as we discussed that the main benefit of using multi chain is to create permission blockchains so what are the kind of permissions that can actually be given so there are about eight different permissions that can be given so first is connect so you remember we saw this yesterday this connect permission which we were giving so let's take an example let's copy this address here and i am going to give it a connect permission right so because this command ran successfully it has generated a transaction id for you so connect is the most basic permission it allows a particular address to connect to other nodes on the blockchain and to see the contents of the chain which is why when we saw yesterday that we created our blockchain then we created additional nodes we had to give those nodes this connect permission otherwise they cannot even connect to the blockchain or see anything 
So that's the first one. Then we have something called as the send permission. So again, I will write grant. Then I can paste the address and I can say send. Uh, sorry, send. Right. So of course we can give all the permissions in one shot also, but I'm just doing it one by one to explain. Now in send, what does that mean? That this particular address can send funds or assets to any other address. Similar to that, we are going to see something called receive. That gives permission to an address to receive the funds. So yesterday we also spoke about this concept of freezing. So let's say in our permission blockchain, someone has committed a crime and the court orders us to freeze the assets. That means that particular person, the suspect cannot spend, send the assets anywhere. So we can revoke the send permission. So even though that address can continue to receive, it cannot send those assets anywhere else. So to revoke, we just simply use the revoke command. So like this, there's connect, there is send, there's receive, then there's also issue. Now, what does issue mean? It means that that address can create new assets. So, I mean, if you're running on the Ethereum blockchain, you see that, you know, there is USDT, which is Tether, stable coin. There is BAT, basic attention token. So these are all tokens that are created by someone. So similarly on multi-chain, you can create your own tokens or assets using something called issue. And that is something we are going to see in next week's lecture. That's slightly more advanced. Today, I'm just explaining that an address which has the issue permission, only that can create new assets. Then there is also a create permission, which allows you to create data streams where you can store data. There is mine, which allows you to mine blocks or create blocks. Activate, which allows you to change some permissions of others. And admin, which is the most important. It allows you to change all permissions for anybody else. So these are the various kinds of commands that we use. And then we can use revoke. So let me give you an example of revoke. So we've seen that we have given this particular address here. Look at this line. We have granted that address the connect permission. Now suppose I want to remove it. So I will say revoke, put the address and I will say connect. Now what have I done? I have taken away the connect permission. Similarly, I could take away the issue permission, the send permission or the receive permission. And then of course we have a command called list permissions, which shows you all the permissions of all the different addresses that we have on our node. So it says this is the address, this is the connect permission. This is the address, this is the send permission. So for each address, every single permission is shown one below the other. So those are the commands that I wanted to talk to you about today. So what I'm going to do after this is, of course, I'm sharing these commands with you with the links and everything. I want you to now try it out and set up your own chain and then try out all these commands. Uh, now let me take some questions. So Abhijit wanted to know about the import permission. Sure, let me just first stop sharing my screen. Give me a second. Okay. Just give me one second. Okay. So when we spoke about the import address, what we are doing is we are adding one or more addresses to our nodes wallet without having the associated private key. So we're not creating anything new. There is already some address which may be existing on some other node. I am simply importing that address into my node and I am creating a watch only address, which means I'm watching that address, whatever activities it's doing, whatever balances it have, I can easily pull them into whatever application I have made. So we're just simply watching. That's all we do with import. Made sense. Uh, let me try to take another question. Okay. Does the transaction ID remain static for a node on running connect command? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. So transaction ID is generated in many cases. When you create an asset, when you run certain types of commands, every time that transaction ID is generated and that transaction ID keeps changing because you're doing new things all the time. So if you meant something else, you just have to rephrase your question. Okay, that's an interesting question. Does each address refer to a node? No. Suppose there is a bank which creates a node and connects to the blockchain. That node gets one address. Now the bank onboards 100,000 customers. 
each customer gets their own address so you have 100000 addresses then the bank employees can be given addresses with special permission again more are created so a node can create millions of or store millions of such addresses uh, can an address without a connect permission have a working send and receive permission yes it can so like i said connect is needed if you want that address to connect to other nodes so again going back to the bank example the bank has a million customers the individual customers don't need to connect to other nodes what do they need to do send receive and those kind of thing they don't even need to issue for example so in that case those customers don't have connect they would have only send and receive permissions let me take another question how can i use indi based distributed ids okay so indi is a hyperledger project that we are going to do in a future session today we are only talking about multi chain so we will come to indi and all later so Rishikesh will take that later. Are there any other questions that you guys have? Okay. So like I said, I'm going to, on the WhatsApp groups, I'm going to share the link to this video. I'll share the commands that we are doing. And then I'm going to give you guys time to do your own practicals on this. And next week, what we are going to do is we are going to go into the depth, in depth of creating assets. You know, various kinds of assets can be created, transferring them, doing the entire smart asset lifecycle management. And we'll also dive into something a little more complicated, which is called as the atomic exchange transfer, which is probably one of the most important benefits of using blockchain instead of any other technology for certain use cases. So make sure you go through all the videos we've covered so far, do the homework assignments, and then I'll see you guys next Saturday. Okay, bye-bye.